Hello, and welcome to the Gastric Health Show. My name is Dawn Boxall, and today's topic is all about butyrate and how it's really the key to optimal health and well being, and why it is so important to make sure that you are producing enough butyrate. So, some of you may be thinking, What the heck is butyrate and why does it really matter? And we're going to get into that so that you have kind of a good foundation and an understanding that um, really how your diet and lifestyle play a role in this and actionable things that you can do on a daily basis that can help support um, good butyrate production so that you... um, reap the benefits of um, all of its health benefits. So recently, butyrate has received some significant attention um, as a short chain fatty acid and how it connects to optimal health. And short chain fatty acids kind of hold a key to really unlocking your optimal health and well-being in the aspect of um, kind of that gut brain connection and um, just the gut microbiome. So what is butyrate? Um, And butyrate is truly just a um, short chain fatty acid that your gut bacteria produce after they ferment dietary fibers. So it's kind of the byproduct of um, the digestion of fiber. So if you think about that, what if you don't consume much fiber? Um, That does create some problems. And I have talked about this before on, um, you know, when you don't have adequate fiber that your body utilizes um, fats and protein as its fuel source. And those byproducts that are created are disease causing. So this is why it's so important to consume fiber-filled carbohydrates. And we'll kind of get into more detail of it, um, more specifically on the things that actually do increase butyrate production, um, this short-chain fatty acid. So making sure that you truly um, just utilize some of these basic um, concepts so that you have the ability to, one, prevent disease, um, but then also help reverse disease. So your gut microbiome can be shifted and um, kind of re replaned, re, um, repaired, rebuilt. Um, so again, you can change whatever um, dynamic you have going on in your gut microbiome. You just have to uh, make some shifts with your diet and lifestyle. So there are some natural sources of butyrate, and this comes in butter and ghee. And um, butyrate is abundant in just grass-fed butter. So it's not just from all butter. It is only going to come from grass-fed cows. So you would have to choose a, um, a butter that says from ga- grass-fed cows. And then ghee, ghee is just clarified butter. So basically they're baking out at a low temperature, kind of the, the casein and the whey so that um, they remove those dairy properties. And for one, for some people who have some dairy intolerances, they can tolerate ghee. And um, some people can't. So it's, it's, kind of trial and error when it comes to utilizing ghee if you do have some dairy intolerances, but they do remove a lot of the um, proteins that people uh, will react to. So that makes it a little bit more um, tolerable for some um, lactose intolerant people. But this clarified butter has um, good sources of butyrate concentration. And again, it would need to be from grass-fed cows um, that they're utilizing, they're making, or they're clarifying this butter into ghee. Um, And then lastly, fiber-rich plant-based foods. These are the things that 
have the fiber in them, or as I like to call it, you know, fiber-filled carbohydrates um, in, in reality, because I think a lot of people can relate more to that, where you're getting more um, very specific carbohydrates that have um, rich sources of fiber in them. But the gut bacteria ferment um, these fiber-rich foods, and the result is butyrate. So that's why it's so important to consume them. And that's why I'm always talking about um, really pushing the fiber-filled carbohydrates um, in so many ways because carbohydrates have really taken a hit, kind of like um, fats. And, you know, I don't, I don't disagree to some, at some level, but that doesn't mean you, you don't consume zero carbohydrates. Um, and that doesn't mean that you need to follow a ketogenic diet. Um, not necessary for most people and actually, um, the opposite of what some people truly need. So again, I think it's, you have to evaluate, um, your situation, your health conditions and work with a practitioner like myself who could truly, um, help you sort through everything so that you can, um, um, truly get to where um, you can benefit. So the role of beneficial gut bacteria in butyrate production. And um, your, your gut microbiome plays a big role in maintaining your overall health. And the goal is to kind of have a very diverse community of microorganisms um, throughout your gut microbiome. So we have several microbiomes in our body, um, but specifically the gut microbiome is uh, uh, one of special interest because it does impact your immune system in different ways, your brain, um, so mental and cognitive you know, mental health and cognition, um, and then also, um, you know, the metabolic piece that comes with that. So, you know, your gut microbiome does play a huge role in just your overall health. Um, that's why it's important for it to be healthy. And when you don't have adequate good bacteria, um, we call this um, dysbiosis. So if you don't have enough good bacteria or you have too much bad bacteria or you have bacteria just in the wrong location, this is what we call dysbiosis. And when you have dysbiosis, um, especially in the area where you don't have the beneficial gut microbes, then this can impact your ability to produce butyrate um, because there are certain beneficial bacterial species like Fecalibacterium pretznetzii, um, Eubacterium, and Roseburia species, those are all available to ferment dietary fibers and produce butyrate. So this is what, um, these are the bacteria that are, are prominent in um, producing butyrate. And when you consume a fiber-rich diet, these beneficial gut bacteria um, break down these complex carbohydrates and the fibers and um, ferment them. And then the butyrate is produced um, along with other short-chain fatty acids. So butyrate is one of um, a few different pro um, a few different short-chain fatty acids, um, but butyrate does have a lot of evidence behind it and a lot of research so i do find that it is um, one that i'd like to make sure where you're getting adequate amounts of um, by getting that um, fiber in on a regular basis so now what about butyrate and just overall gut health um, your gut is an ecosystem of its own and when these um, beneficial gut bacteria produce butyrate, this provides energy to your colonic cells. So those are the cells within your colon. And this energy supply helps nourish and support um, your gut cells. And also really does help with your gut integrity or that, um, 
that lining, those tight junctions, which is where we're going next. So your gut barrier function, butyrate influences this. And um, the gut barrier cells, which line that intestinal wall, play an essential role in um, keeping your gut microbiome or your the contents of your intestines the kind of the broken down particles and you know just all the byproducts that our body is um, getting exposed to or that we put in our body and put on our body um, all of these things that your um your body is having to sift through and utilize. Um, this is um, why it's so important to have good gut integrity or that good um, lining of the intestinal wall to be strong. Um, now, here's the thing, it is permeable. Your intestines are supposed to be permeable um, because that's how we absorb nutrition um, so that we can use that as fuel. So the problem lies in when that um, intestinal permeability gets weaker and weaker. And really it kind of starts with that mucus layer because you, if you don't have a thick mucus layer, um, that's when big problems can start arising. That's when you start seeing that increase in intestinal permeability. But if it's, if that thick mucus layer and everything's kind of filtered through appropriately, then everything is broken down in an appropriate um, particle sizes and in the right uh, form so that your body can utilize it and your immune system not react and think that this is foreign and I need to protect myself. So again, it's it's building up that intestinal wall so that you have the ability to fight um, all kinds of things that come your way. So, you know, even like prescription medications can kind of leak through or seep through um, that that intestinal barrier when that mucus layer has been degraded. And sometimes when you aren't giving, because when you do the byproduct of consuming um, fibers is that that mucus layer is nice and hearty. And when you don't consume that, then that mucus layer is not thick and hearty and protecting you. And then that's when even things like medications and then the, you know, toxins that we're exposed to or even toxins in food. Like if, you know, you were exposed to some food that was not healthy and it was maybe, um, going to create some food poisoning. Those are the things that your body would, um, want to be able to be strong and um, protect you from. Research does show that butyrate strengthens the tight junctions between the gut cells by stimulating the production of proteins. And these tight junctions serve kind of as gatekeepers, regulating the passage of nutrients, water, and other substances into the bloodstream and preventing the entry of the harmful substances. So again, butyrate is a key player in this. And um, when already that mucus layer is broken down and you're not, you don't have that protection and things are starting to um, kind of start seeping through, um, really ramping up your fiber consumption can truly help rebuild that in, um, in a way that can help set you up for success in the future. Um, but as a result of reinforcing these tight junctions, butyrate helps maintain the gut barrier and reduces the likelihood of harm, harmful substances getting through. So what's the significance of a healthy gut uh, for overall well-being? A healthy gut not only contributes to proper digestion, um, but also absorption of um, nutrients as well, um, but also just kind of your overall well-being because your, your gut does play this um, significant role in really how diseases start. Um, so really paying attention to your, your, your gut health is a key way to really help set you up for success long-term because 
um, you are more in prevention and protection mode and not in um, repairing and restoring mode. So what are the health benefits of butyrate? And um, one is blood sugar regulation. Um, there is a positive effect of butyrate on the regulation of blood sugar and um, insulin sensitivity is improved which improves your body's ability to control your blood glucose levels. So, and it reduces your risk of type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance by promoting better blood sugar control. Um, a study published in the Frontiers in Nutrition suggests that butyrate improves insulin sensitivity and glucose homeostasis, resulting in better, better blood sugar control. And according to this study, butyrate can reduce the risk of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. So if you struggle with um, blood sugar dysregulation or insulin resistance or your insulin is just elevated. So optimal is for your insulin is kind of two to five. And um, once you're getting above seven, you're really starting to get to where you're, it's going to be harder to lose weight. Um, the whole process, the snowball begins rolling. And as it definitely gets over 10, um, that's when you're going to see some resistance to weight loss without um interjecting appropriate things and butyrate being one of them so this is one way so how do you how do you insert butyrate you consume fiber-filled carbohydrates really that's the bottom line um, there are more things that you can do but really that is the most impactful um, so blood sugar regulation is a big one that um, butyrate can benefit your health um, the next one is weight management and um, a healthy weight does really begin in the gut and yeah your whole metabolic health is really driven from the health of your gut. So if you really struggle with your metabolism, um, maintaining a healthy weight, um, these are things that can um, really influence it positively or negatively when you are, you know, consuming butyrate producing foods um, and also doing the the diet and lifestyle stuff that, that come with that. Butyrate can be considered more like an appetite regulating hormone um, and helping you regulate your body weight because it does play a role in your gut microbiome in those appetite hormones um, and helping you manage those feelings of hunger and fullness. One study shows that butyrate influences the production of appetite-regulating hormones, promoting feelings of satiety, and aiding in weight management. And in studies, butyrate has been found to play a role in regulating your body weight. So again, it just goes back to that metabolic health piece that it is connected and why making sure that you are producing short-chain fatty acids that are actually uh, manufacturing butyrate and specifically butyrate and not just all of the other um, short chain fatty acids so that you know if you have those good beneficial bacteria that are available um, if you have a healthy gut then you'll have those beneficial gut microbes that can then produce um, butyrate um, the next one is um, your gut barrier and your immune system support. Um, research has found that butyrate enhances the mucus production and strengthens tight junctions between the cells. So again, you're growing that mucus layer and um, growing that protection so that harmful substances don't seep through um, and create um, gaps in that intestinal wall that is protecting you from getting into your bloodstream and now your body's, your immune system is reacting because of that. Um, it is clear from um, this study that butyrate plays an important role in maintaining gut health and reducing the risk of leaky gut disease or an increase in intestinal permeability. Um, number four is inflammation reduction. So we do know that um, studies show that butyrate has anti-inflammatory properties and um, has a potential for therapeutic 
um, benefits. So one study found that butyrate treatment improved the gut barrier and reduced inflammation in mice with colitis. Um, so it just, it's again, it's one of those things. This byproduct is super important to controlling even that low grade inflammation that can occur um, when things in your life are just out of balance. Number five is brain health and cog um, cognitive function. And um, recent research suggests that butyrate may be beneficial for brain health and cognitive function. And studies have shown that butyrate can cross the blood brain barrier and potentially enhance the cognitive processes. Um, and this includes memory and learning. And then additionally, butyrate may protect against neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So to me, that's pretty powerful. So one, if you focus on just optimizing your gut health, part of that piece is going to be butyrate production or overall is really just short chain fatty acid production because there's a benefit from other short chain fatty acids as well. They, they do different or they play different roles, um, but butyrate has um, some significant roles and one that they've studied significantly. But um, when it has, since it can cross the blood brain barrier, it can travel the vagus nerve, um, which I've talked about um, on previous posts on the vagus nerve that you, you know, that those those gut microbes can um, travel that vagus nerve to the brain and vice versa. So um, you're having that impact in your brain health as well. And, you know, years ago it was kind of believed or thought that, you know, if, you're, if your gut is a mess, then kind of your brain is inflamed. So if you have um, gut dysbiosis, if you have a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, if you have, um, you know, H. pylori that's in the stomach, if you have um, any other type of, you know, even if you want to go as deep as celiacs, Crohn's, colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, IBD, all of these things, they all do impact your mood, your mental health, your depression, anxiety, and they really kind of see that it's you know, even when you go even further to like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, those brain diseases, that they are um, just really, and it's just really sh saying that um, your brain is inflamed. So if you can reverse, protect, prevent, um, the delay of those types of diseases. Um, and I've talked about this before to date, we don't have a cure for dementia and Alzheimer's, but um, we do know we can delay it by the things that we do with our diet and lifestyle and just how we live our life, um, you know, our social connections and just really um, truly living in community and connection with other people can truly make a huge difference. Um, the next one or six is colorectal health and cancer prevention. Um, butyrate has been extensively studied for its role in maintaining colorectal health and preventing colorectal cancer. And it provides nourishment to the cells lining the colon and promotes their proper functioning. So again, it's you're, you're putting yourself in a good place by consuming those fiber-filled carbohydrates. Um, butyrate also inhibits the growth of cancer cells and induces apoptosis, or which is cell death um, of the cancer cells, and lowers the risk of colorectal cancers. To me, that is why you want to kind of when you're building your plate, you want to, yes, think about protein. That is um, step number one. But step number two is, what is my fiber source? <laughs> what am I getting that is going to provide me fiber? Um, and there are different types of fiber. It can be resistant starch fibers. It can be prebiotic fibers, uh, probiotic. Um, there's different, you know, there's soluble, there's insoluble. Um, 
there's options. And what is going to be my fiber source in conjunction with my protein? Um, to me, those are your top two. And then you think about where's my healthy fats? Where am I getting some healthy fats from? Number seven is cardiovascular health. And um, cardiovascular health may also benefit from butyrate. Research suggests that butyrate decreases LDL cholesterol, which is your bad cholesterol, um, and increases your HDL cholesterol, which is considered your good cholesterol. Now, I know that there are some new studies and evidence coming out about LDL and HDL um, and its true impact. And really, we need to look at the particle sizes. And yes, I agree 100%. Um, but this study just suggests that the your LDL is um, lowered and your HDL is increased um, with butyrate. So that's a side benefit I think that um, all of us can um, appreciate. But butyrate modulates the lipid metabolism and reduces inflammation, which may contribute to um, a healthier cardiovascular system. Um, number eight, mental health and mood regulation. So um, butyrate can play a role in your mood and mental health. And research has shown that gut microbiome and the butyrate production can affect neurotransmitter production and signaling, which can affect your mood and mental health. And further research is definitely needed, but early findings suggest that a link between butyrate, gut health, and mental health. So again, it kind of goes back to that um, if you have an imbalance in your gut, your brain is inflamed. So, and they really are thinking more in the line of it's just brain inflammation um, that people with depression and anxiety and even Alzheimer's, dementia. So really, if you, if you attack your health in a way of how can I stay more anti-inflammatory in my choices that I can benefit that, um, that comes with fiber. So you can think of your plants as kind of like a fire extinguisher and that really dampens that heat or that flame, if you wanna think of it that way. Um, so vegetables, fruits, whole grains, nuts, seeds, lentils, all of those provide um, anti-inflammatory properties that you can just cycle through each of your meals and if you eat snacks through that. So again, um, there are ways. There are ways that you can um, prevent the decline in your mental health and mood um, by making different choices with what you put on your fork. So I would say I challenge you in this in really truly um, evaluating what you do. And I would say track it because you're not going to know by guessing. You can think you do good. Oh, I have a large salad every day. One large salad is not enough fiber. Um, you are not going to get enough fiber from having a vegetable once a day. And I do find that in the bariatric community, the fiber piece is complicated. You are, you struggle with protein first and then getting some fiber source in. Of course, you want, you know, some type of vegetable source, but you're probably going to need some type of grain source um, or seed or nut or something that's going to add some additional fiber to boost it um, because you're not going to get it without um, boosting it with these other properties. Um, number nine is the autoimmune disease management and the modulatory effect of butyrate on the immune system makes it a potential tool for managing autoimmune disease. Um, kind of like how I said when that gut barrier, that intestinal wall barrier is compromised, then things can seep through that now your immune system is having to react to because it's not used to seeing um, that type of molecule come through at that 
um, size or shape or form or complexity that it is. Um, research does indicate that butyrate regulates immune responses, suppresses inflammation, and restores immune balance. And these properties hold promise for conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, um, where immune system dysregulation is a key factor. So, but autoimmune disease is definitely your immune system is being triggered something is triggering this and um, if the benefit of having more butyrate production um, can truly help your immune calm your immune system down because of the anti-inflammatory property and really just um, building that integrity up in your gut lining so that it can prevent further reactions and help reverse everything. Um, to me, that seems like a no-brainer, except I would say when it comes to you, you are not a lover of um, fiber-filled carbo carbohydrates, especially like the vegetables and the fruits. Um, you more rely on uh, refined grains and not unrefined. So you don't seek out like 100% whole wheat bread or, you know, those big heavy loaves that have lots of nuts and seeds and fibers in them. You find the Wonder White bread um, and that's your favorite. That is not going to provide you any benefit um, when it comes to butyrate production because there is no fiber, even if they add um, a synthetic form of fiber, it is still not the same. It is food. Your body is intended to consume whole real food, um, not synthetic versions of it. So, and that's why, you know, less is more when it comes to vitamins and they fortify these foods, which I'm not against. I think it's a great thing because, you know, we have to have um, nutrients in some way that your body can fuel off of. And um, if you are not consuming those foods, at least you're going to be getting some vitamins and minerals from it, but you will not be getting those phytonutrients, um, those antioxidants that are naturally occurring in whole real food that your body is just at a loss for. It is not going to get that. So again, if you have autoimmune diseases, then I would encourage you to really look at your fiber intake. Um, so how do you increase the production of butyrate? One, I've already said this one, consume high fiber foods. Your gut bacteria primarily produce butyrate by fermenting fibers. And so making sure that you consume a fiber rich diet. So for females, it's supposed to be 28 grams of fiber per day. And for males, it should be 34 grams of fiber per day. Um, I kind of just base it in the middle and I just say at least strive for 30 grams of fiber every day. Um, and then we just build on that if needed. So depending on the person, we might inch it up a little bit um, to see if we get better satiation, better bowel movements, um, just better, um, you know, gut health in overall. But um, you really got to look for those fiber-filled carbohydrates um, like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, um, beans and lentils, seeds, um, all of those things can provide the fiber that will produce butyrate. And again, it all depends on if you have um, beneficial gut bacteria um, that we talked about, those beneficial gut microbes are necessary um, to produce that. So at the beginning, you may not, but you keep consuming it and you will. Um, but in order to, to support the growth of diverse types of bacteria, then you have to consume a diverse range of fiber sources. So don't just say, okay, I'm going to have this vegetable every day for because uh, this is my favorite vegetable. And I'm just going to make this because it's simple and it's convenient. I can, I can count everything easily. The key is variety because your gut needs variety. Um, a variety of plants and a variety of seeds and beans and lentils. So switching it up on the different types is ideal. 
Number two is resistant starch. So resistant starch acts as a fuel source for butyrate producing bacteria because it resists digestion um, and it resists digestion in your small intestines. And some of the foods that are rich in resistant starch are green bananas, cooked and cooled potatoes and rice, um, beans and lentils, and then whole grains such as oats and um, brown rice as well. So those foods are rich in resistant starch. And um, some of them are also rich in insoluble, insoluble fibers, um, in both, some of them are both. Like um, beans and lentils are all of them. They are insoluble, soluble, and resistant starch. And I will say this is something that I think is fascinating. Um, and I've talked about this before, but I don't think people appreciate this enough. But I saw this firsthand with my CGM or my continuous glucose monitor. Um, I have only two more weeks left and I'm, I'm waiting on it because I'm um, starting my, I've already, I'm, I've done my, second week of my weight training has been completed as of today and um, now I start on a weekly rotation with um, this trainer and um, doing workouts that way so I want to see what changes um, after I've done this for two to four weeks with the trainer and then I'm going to do another CGM and just kind of evaluate that but I can tell you that any time I have resistant starch, my blood sugar drops. Not negatively, not in a bad way, not low, but instead of, you know, it's a carbohydrate source, it is not rising it, it is declining it. So I can have a, a, a kind of like a, a little hill when I start eating and then it will go down the hill and it, there's no spikes, there's no valleys. It's just a nice little curve that it kind of goes down. So again, if you've not done um, any type of resistant starch um, or kind of like for me, the beans, the lentils, um, potato salad, that type of stuff, then um, I, would, I would try it. You've got to try these things and experiment for yourself. Number three is fermented foods. So fermented foods, um, these are things like yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha. Um, these contain live bacteria that can actually help populate your gut and produce butyrate. Um, so making sure that you incorporate these in regularly is important. Now, um, I think everyone should be striving towards consuming fermented foods on a daily basis, just a few forkfuls, a little bit, or kombucha, something in that avenue so that you um, are really getting those live bacteria. Um, if you're good at eating yogurt, do the yogurt. Um, just make sure that your cultures are still alive. And it will say that on there. It will say live cultures. And if it doesn't, then that means you want to pick a different brand. Um, there are so many different types of yogurt out there. Personally, if I'm going to buy a yogurt, it is going to be plain. There's no, not going to be any flavor and it is going to um, have live cultures in it. And I'm going to add the flavor to it. So I might add some berries. I might add some chia seeds. I might add some hemp hearts. I might add um, you know, some nuts, I might add, um, peanut butter. It really just depends on what I'm needing, what my body kind of needs and when I'm having it. Um, you know, if it's in the morning, I try to make breakfast a savory meal. And so I'm, I'm going to do more of like a plain Greek yogurt with some peanut butter, like a natural peanut butter that has no added sugar. And then I'm going to add like some chia seeds and maybe some nuts for some texture um, so that it's it stays more savory as opposed to sweet. So, um, you know, getting those fermented foods in daily is important. Um, number four is a probiotic supplement. So probiotics, again, are live bacteria that can be taken as supplements to help 
um, kind of recondition and repopulate your gut and really improve your overall gut health. And find to find probiotic strains that produce butyrate, such as the bifidobacterium or the lactobacillus species, um, it's important to work with someone like myself who can help choose the right type of probiotic supplement kind of for your personal needs. Because um, we, I utilize different strains for different things. Um, so I may not want someone to utilize a lactobacillus species because I might have this inclination that I think they might have small intestinal bacteria overgrowth or SIBO. And that those lactobacillus species really aggravate and make the symptoms worse for the patient. So I wouldn't want to um, have them take any probiotic with that in it. So I utilize different types, more soil-based or SAC-B or, you know, different forms like that or specific strains and species for different conditions. Um, so the ones that I have are Gastric Health brand. Um, we Our line of probiotics, our ultimate Gut Restore and the WLS formulated probiotic. Those are good general probiotics for supporting a good healthy gut long term and um, getting. Now, the Ultimate Gut Restore I do utilize in helping um, restore and repopulate um, many times. So, and you know, the, the WLS formulated one is um, a great one as well. It's just a lower dose and ha- it's for it more general overall health um, is where I would put that one. Now, number five, reduce sugar and processed foods. So these are the things that are going to negatively impact um, the, the balance of your gut bacteria and, and reducing that butyrite production. So you want to avoid those refined carbohydrates um, and you want foods that are going to be more in the whole grain and that are unrefined. And um, sugary drinks and foods, if you do it in excess, that can create um, and kind of um, create an increase in intestinal permeability and damage that intestinal barrier. So it's not protective. So I don't mean none, like you you can never have sugar. I'm just saying evaluate it, you know, truly evaluate what you are consuming because it, it will impact um, how the health of your gut. Um, number six is prebiotic supplements and pre or prebiotics in general. So from the food source, you can get it from foods, but you can also get it in your in your probiotics as well. So um, like our gastric health line, it does have prebiotics in it. Um, in different ones in each of them. Inulin is used in the WLS formulated one, and then the Ultimate Gut Restore has um, the partially hydrolyzed guar gum, which is very FODMAP friendly and for those with sensitive um, digestive issues. So again, picking the right prebiotic is good to work with someone on because, um, you know, some products that are out there, you may find um, work a little bit better for different conditions. Um, But a a prebiotic in food, these are things like garlic and onion and leek and asparagus and um, a variety, even milk has prebiotic properties. Basically, anything that is considered a fructo-oligosaccharide or a galacto-oligosaccharide. So those oligosaccharides are the ones that can help um, nourish these bacteria and support the growth. Um, Number seven, manage your stress levels. Um, Chronic stress disrupts your gut microbiome and affects butyrate production. So you want to maintain a healthy gut it can totally be, you could do everything perfect. You could eat a perfect diet. You could um, do everything possible to have a healthy gut. But your stress, you're ignoring it. You're not addressing it. You're not doing anything about it. And that can derail all those efforts. So you have to 
factor this in when you're looking at the big picture. So you, if you want to have a healthy gut microbiome, then stress management techniques um, such as regular exercise or just moving your body, mindfulness practices, mindful eating, um, a mindful walk, um, or more of like a meditative walk, you know, any of those things can be considered mindful practices. And then getting enough sleep and, and then also having fun. What do you do for fun um, can help manage your stress. Um, and then the last one is it's eight, um, avoid overuse of antibiotics. And antibiotics can cause um, gut bacteria, including butyrate producers, to become unbalanced. So here's the thing. If you need antibiotics, you take the antibiotics. But when you take the antibiotics, I would encourage you to take a probiotic that is intended for the use with antibiotics or can't it, it, it pairs nicely with that antibiotic. Um, they're not all made that way, but um, our Ultimate Gut Restore and our Saccharomyces boulardii both do. Both of those are available to use with an antibiotic and you could actually take them both um, they 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 both could benefit you because they're totally two different type of species the saccharomyces boulardii is just a healthy yeast and um, the ultimate gut restore has a variety of lactobacillus and um, bifidobacterium um, species in it and um, can really help repopulate and um, help protect the killing off of all the good commensal bacteria. So it, it is really important to kind of um, ask, just reach out to me if you're like, okay, I don't, I'm not sure what I need. Um, what would you recommend? And if it's not something that can be utilized for um, our gastric health line, I would I would encourage you, um, or could send recommendations from my uh, full script dispensary, where it is a variety of different options when it comes to um, supplements that I can utilize it specifically for your condition, what, what you have going on um, or combination of products. So let's wrap this up. Um, butyrate, um, kind of the unsung hero of the gut and really does hold immense potential in promoting um, optimal health and well-being. And butyrate plays several beneficial roles from regulating blood sugar levels, reducing weight, improving your gut barrier health, and reducing inflammation. You can harness its incredible power and enhance your overall health by consuming butyrate-rich foods and also butyr consuming the foods that produce butyrate. Um, and this is something that you can easily do to have um, a healthier, more vibrant life and really live the healthy lifestyle that you are striving for. So I hope this has helped. Check out our Gastric Health membership. Um, this is a great way to get input and insight to what you have going on. And um, if you haven't checked out our genetic testing or our GI map, um, um, products. Those are awesome for really getting to the root of what's happening. And um, your genetics is really your roadmap. I mean, this literally is the roadmap for um, all health and for your whole life. It's not those genes aren't going to change in the aspect of what's in it. Um, not like a GI map where the stool and your gut health changes and shifts. So um, you only need one genetic test. Um, but you could, you could benefit from multiple uses of a GI map stool test um, to assess and reassess. Um, and then later down the line, you may need to assess again. Whereas the genetic piece is really, it's a one-time thing. But then if you find that you're in a position where, hey, something's happened in my life and some genes have gotten turned back on because um, something is shifting, something is changing. And um, we can go right back to your roadmap 
figure out what was turned back on and get it turned back off. So that is the beauty of um, the 3x4 genetic test that I love. And um, if you're a member, that gives you the best value and it gives you 40% off of those packages that include some type of testing and um, allows you to get the best value. And, um, and then just work with me through the whole test and um, getting your optimal results out of that. So I hope this has helped and I hope this challenges you in your really your evaluation of consuming fiber-filled carbohydrates and really just getting in those foods that can promote a healthy gut. So you guys have a great week and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.